raising the bar. Celebrate the New England Patriots. ESPN 2's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Saab. Distinctively designed and independently inspired. Saab, the state of independence. And welcome back, everyone, to the Memorial Athletic Center here on the campus of Kent State University as we get started here for the second half of action. It's a 12-point lead. And the good news for Southern Illinois, Mike, is that they are 19-1 and on the season when leading at halftime. What does Kent State have to do to get back into this ballgame? Well, first of all, they've got to start making some shots. They're getting some open shots, especially when they double team and when, when against the zone. But they've got to start against the man round. They've got to start making some shots. They've got to get the ball inside because they're doing a pretty good job taking care of the basketball. And I think they got to rebound a little better as well. Defensively, they have got to slow down Jamal Tatum. Jamal Tatum had 14 points in the first half, most of them coming from long range. He's had a great first half. He's not he's supposed to be, or at least noted for his shooting, he's noted for his defense, but he shoots over 40%, and he's so quick with the ball, he can get his shot off the dribble. He can also get it off the pass. And it speaks, as we mentioned, to their depth that uh, their best player, arguably, Brooks, uh, is substandard so far offensively. But his teammates have picked up the slack. Here we go in the second half. And Kent, Kent State starts out man-to-man -man against him. They just soon play zone, but they have no choice being down by 12. Can't give up the base. Steve Harrison missed the layup. Had a good look at it. Now let's see if Kent can be a little bit more patient this half. You know, 12, 12 points down is really not that much. You make a couple of baskets, get it under 10, and then you can make it a ball game again. Edwin off the screen. Nice feed to Cutley, and Cutley cashed it home. Just like that. Just be a little patient and try to get the ball inside, whether it's by the pass or the dribble. Cutley, the best offensive player in the ballgame so far for the Golden Flashes. He has 12. Hairston out top. Nice patience this time by Southern Illinois. And they've got skill forwards who can step away from the basket. And of course, their guards are super quick and can penetrate any time. Brooks comes up a little bit short. Haynes with the rebound. Cutley once again, same spot, different result. Good idea, though. You take that shot anytime you can get it. Just Darren Brooks. Darren Brooks, the reigning Missouri Valley Conference Player of the Year and Defensive Player of the Year and the MVC. Shaw out top. Halfway down and out for Brooks. And in transition quickly, Edwin. Couldn't get it to fall out of bounds, and it's Saluki basketball. Two, two great scoring opportunities. They've got to capitalize on those. Of course, Southern Illinois shooting 43% from the field, but even more shocking, 26% from the field for Kent State. Well, that's a lot to do with the defense, and then, of course, those missed drives that, that they're not converting. Harrison out top. Tatum coming off the curl on the baseline. Really looking for him coming off those screens. Here's Brooks. Very unselfish that time. Hairston from the corner, no good. Haynes going up high for the rebound and got it back. Nice time underneath. And one. Great look. That's the way to pass the ball ahead to your teammates. Reward them for running the floor. Jay Youngblood. Finishes the layup at the other end and has a chance to complete the three-point play. Watch this pass. Great bounce pass. What's wrong with a nice, simple, effective bounce pass <laughs> once in a while? Spoken like a true coach. The Amen. Truco Division II Player of the Year last year out of Detroit, Michigan. Jay Youngblood completes the three-point play. And the lead is down to seven points. You know what else needs to happen here, Mark? This crowd needs to get into this game. Uh, don't just wait for this team to get ahead. Let's get in the game now and give the Kent State fans, because we want to see this game come down to the wire. Warren guarded by Wazinski. Brooks guarded by Edwin. No way to push off that time, Deep Brooks. Warren trying to post up underneath. Ten seconds to go on the shot clock. Hairston looking to ISO, get a high pick and roll. Brooks with two on the shot clock. Hairston just got it off. Just got it off. And that offensive possession was doomed, it seemed like, from the beginning. Jumper off the mark. 
Youngblood had a good look at it. A three there would have been so important. Oh, and Brooks put it on spin cycle and missed. Back the other way, up and down we go. DeAndre Haynes. Oh, he broke an ankle or two. Edwin with the rebound. Got away with a hole, did Southern Illinois. And back we come again. It's Tatum's turn. It's a three on two. Owen. Fast and furious here at the Mac. Well, the big fella, Wazinski. There you go. Go inside to the big guy. Reward him for running the floor. <laughs> They went up and down a few times as foul was going to be called on Joshua Warren. What a crazy sequence this was. Very much so, but good, good recovery on both teams' parts. They're getting up and down the floor, and they're making things happen. Our Owen cashed in that time. He was the starter for the last seven games prior to their last one. Youngblood knocks down the baseline jump shot. Set up, set up by a nice screen by his teammate Edwin. That's the first basket of the game. Zinski got his first bucket. There's the crowd. I was wondering where they were. <laughs> and Chris Lowry wants to talk it over. With just under four minutes elapsed here in the second half of play, the lead is down to seven when we come back. Yes. Saluki's leading by seven with 16-16 to go in the second half. This weekend, don't miss more. Regional college basketball action on ABC Sunday at 1.30 Eastern, 10.30 a.m. Pacific. Pitt takes on Villanova, Georgia Tech against Florida State, and DePaul against Marquette. And a pivotal Conference USA game. Ch check the local listings for the game available in your area. Golden flashes with possession, down by seven points. Penn State uh, shooting a little bit better here in their early goings in the second half. Youngblood out top. Wazinski off the curl, missed it. Two on two, Young trying to force the issue. Nice patience this time. Brooks on the bench for Southern Illinois. This has been a problem so far in this game. Here's Owen from outside. Ball knocked away, and it's Penn State ball. Gates comes back into the ball game for Edwin, and we have a timeout here on Bracket Buster Saturday. Back after this. with a seven-point lead here on Bracket Buster Saturday. I'm Mark Jones, courtside, along with Mike Jarvis. Now, prior to the game, Kent State player Armand Gates walked out to the center of the court and laid down that chain that the manager there is holding. Now, that chain, a very interesting story. There you see DeAndre Haynes' name on it. Every player and every coach has their name on one of those links. It started last year when every player had to carry a chain during their endurance run in which they had to complete that run in training camp during a certain period of time and it was really a bonding experience for the players and the coaching staff and they adopted it as their team credo their credo now being that our chain never breaks it was pretty imposing to see uh Oh. walk out there with that thing around his neck. I'm not sure. I wasn't sure what he was going to do with it at first. No, I thought he was going to give it to you to wear. Maybe <laughs> I'll see you wearing that in our next game. But uh, it's true when they talk about chains. And, you know, it's only as strong as the weakest link. And uh, it's a real sign of team unity and a real bonding thing. There's Gates from outside. Of course, a three would really help to bond this team. They could use one. They haven't made one in the game yet. Well, you know what? You get to a point where you either got to make one or you just got to stop taking them and get the ball inside the three-point line. Aids out top. Just like that. Another jumper off the mark by Youngblood. Back come the Salukis with a seven-point lead. 15 minutes to go in the ball game. Southern Illinois comes into this contest 21-6 overall. They won two consecutive times on Bracket Buster Saturday. And they do it because they play great defense and they get on the floor after the ball. And today, you got Kent State, who usually shoots 40% as a team from three at zero. Wow. 0 for 12, I believe. And right now, Mike, uh, Lamar Owen, 6'5 senior from Owensboro, Kentucky, a little shaken up after that collision in the paint. Well, the good thing is when you got a body like him, you're young and you're wiry, you get right up, and you know what? He'll be back in very shortly. Top six men in the Missouri Valley Conference last season. Was a starter for a while until just recently, uh, seven games ago. Started coming off the bench once again. 
Well, it just makes this team that much more dangerous when you can bring a guy like him off the bench. And Lowry really has a feel for his team because he's shooting 62% from the field since returning to his bench role. Here's Crenshaw from the baseline, drops it like it's hot. And the lead is down to five with 14 and a half to go. Crenshaw with four of the game. And Young nice turns it over. It's a three on one for Kent State. Young blood. Fouled. Close to being, close to being an intentional, but. Tony Young committing the foul. And Youngblood will go to the strike for a pair in an effort to cut the lead to just three. Well, that was made by good on-the-ball defense, as you saw there. And then, obviously, at the end of the break, this little no-look pass. Of course, the old coach would probably rather see a nice bounce pass with the left hand. You can't see enough of those, huh? No, you can't. You can never get enough of those. Youngblood knocks it down. He's a 70% free throw shooter on the season. I mentioned that he was the Juco Division II Player of the Year last year and had a team high 15 in their loss at Buffalo. They've done a nice job on the floor today. Yeah, right? a great job. Do you know why coaches like the bounce pass, Mark? Why? Because if the defense stops a bounce pass, they usually have to kick it and the ball goes back to the offensive team. So you got two chances for one if you throw the bounce pass. But the fans like the look away. Well, that's nice, but you know what? Coaches get fired if look aways aren't completely scored. Trust me. 15 on the shot clock. Harrison lets it fly. Out of bounds. Kent State basketball. A chance to come within one or tie it with a three. One possession game right now. This is what uh, obviously uh, everybody came to see. Jim Christian holds up his fist, calling out the play. At halftime, Coach Christian, nice move. Crenshaw. Oh! Straight quarter. Guess what? Is that a two? Yeah, just a two. But they'll take it. That freshman from Detroit is fearless. He has six points. That was take your pick. Who are you going to call the foul on? I, uh, I think they got the first foul. Missed the second one, but you... Marcus Crenshaw started to light it up a little bit. So just inside the three, as you saw here, the lefty goes up. Looked like he might have been hit also. But right now, Kent State will take the two and the one-point deficit. And the bench is excited as they should be. Everybody should be into this game. I know we are. And right now, uh, the Golden Flash is in the midst of an 8 to nothing run as Rosinski takes a seat. I'm sure it'll be a short seat, give him a little rest. They have able to get off offensively in the game. Well, it's tough. They do a really good job down in the post, doubling up on him. But he's still been very effective, and he opens things for other players. There's Brooks. That's going to be a blocking foul against the Golden Flashers. Kent State with their second team foul. Southern Illinois with 14 fouls and a half. Very fortunate that time not to get a charge call. Uh, you know, he beat his man, got in the lane, got to go straight up and down. You want to land almost on the same spot you leave from. If you tilt in, you got a chance of picking up a charge and taking away a good play. Brooks knocks down the first of two. Mike, he's a player who flirted with the idea of turning pro last year, thought about putting his name into the NBA draft pool, but decided to come back, and he is a fifth-year senior. He is priceless and invaluable to this team. And I think he made a great decision. Uh, I'm sure that he probably got some good advice that he wouldn't be a lottery pick. Why not come back to college, get a second degree? He's working on his masters, and uh, he's, he's mastering and winning. Oh, young bud with a soft touch inside. It appeared to be partially blocked. Yes, it was. He's having a really effective game, showing no respect for anybody. Brooks trying to cross him up, trying to come back at him. Advance it. Penn State with a chance for the lead. And one. And did you see the pass? It was called a bounce pass. This might we might give a, a little series on making the bounce pass and finishing off the three-point play the old-fashioned way. Who knows? Watch this. Spread the floor, run the break, take your pick, bounce pass, foul, and a basket. Hairston chopped him on the play. Now, I can get excited about plays like that. Anybody can dunk. <laughs> Not anybody. I couldn't. <laughs> That's the first lead of the ball game for the Golden Flashes. Jay Youngblood, who had a team high 15 in their last game, has Southern Illinois head coach Chris Lowry contemplating his next move. Down by two. You said it was cold outside, but it's certainly gotten hot in here. <laughs> Tatum on the baseline. 
He's been conspicuous by his silence in the second half. Almost a steal. Hairston. Tatum fouled. Will it count? Drop it. Jamal Tatum got the fortuitous bounce. And he has a chance to put his team back in front. That was his 16th point. Let's take a look at that again. I don't, I didn't quite see it. Uh, maybe that's what happens when you bring your refs with you. You get a call like that at a crucial time in the game. Jim Christian, the head coach for Kent State, is apoplectic on the sidelines. He can't believe that the officials counted that hoop. Well, you know what? That's for a party because he hasn't seen too many calls like that against him in this building where they hardly ever lose. <laughs> you don't have to be able to read lips to know what he's thinking right now. Well, you Good thing you can't get a technical well, call for what you're thinking. Oh, I, let me tell you something. I think a few <laughs> guys have. Young blood. Nice strong move inside by Gerwig. Gerwig's knees look like they're holding up pretty good today. He's doing a nice job in the post, filling in for Wozinski. Last year played the whole year with a separated shoulder, actually a couple of seasons ago. Kent State says man to man. Why not? It's working. That's the danger, though. Shaw kicks it back out to Tatum. A little high pick and roll action. Brooks with 10 on the shot clock. Nice feed underneath. So unselfish. Hairston missed the layup, but was fouled underneath by Haynes. Good call, just about a half an hour late, that's all. But it was a good call. You know, sometimes you're on the right train, but the wrong track. <laughs> Brooks is looking for the right train right now. We'll be right back. Your action. All right, Scott, back here. One-point ball game, 11.35 to go on Bracket Buster Saturday. Southern Illinois led for most of the game until about the last two and a half minutes. And Kent State with a furious and frenetic run. Regained the lead. It's 40 to 39. And, uh, in the second half, Kent State has outscored Southern Illinois by a margin of 20 to 7. Hairston at the free throw line right now. Hairston averaging just under 10 points per game for the Salukis. Fairview Heights, Illinois, a starter since his freshman year. It was all conference in Missouri Valley and all defensive team member as well. Just showed a picture of uh, Chris Lowry, coach of Southern Illinois. And not only is he 32 years of old of age, he's also, this, since this is Black History Week, we're giving a little exercise. He is the only head coach of color in the Missouri Valley Conference and the first African-American, the coach, uh, men's coach at uh, Southern Illinois. So uh, it's something extra to be proud about. They certainly have a special thing going on campus there. Gerwig inside. Haynes out top. The three. Got it. Haynes. DeAndre Haynes knocks down a three ball. First one of the day, but a big one. He's got seven points, and the lead is up to three. Southern Illinois reeling here just a little bit with under 11 minutes to go. The crowd has gotten back into this ball game. Very, very much so. Doing a great job on defense is Kent State. Really taking away the dribble. Shaw defense. almost turned it over, and he did. The 11th turnover of the night for the Salukis. And usually it's the other way around. They're usually the ones making the team turn it over. Kent State is playing inspired basketball at the defensive end. Chris Lowry, former point guard for Southern Illinois, trying to get his team back on track offensively. Marcus Crenshaw up court. Crenshaw got the start tonight in place of Armand Gates. Feed inside, and the basket counts. Gerwin again. Gerwin has four. Tatum hands it off, and Warren came up short, and Kelly was there with the stick back. Let's take that off. Shaw, Matt Shaw. Perseverance paid off that time. And Shaw has 10. Lead back to three as we approach the midway point in the second half. Look at the great disparity in points in the paint. Kent State doubling up on the Salukis. Wide open. Youngblood maybe a little bit too wide open that time. Had too much time to think about it. You know, we were talking earlier about the fact that they're going to get wide open shots because of the double team by Southern Illinois. 
what I think Kent State should do and realize that today is not their day shooting the three. Take a step or two inside the three-point circle. Get a two. Twos will win this game. Twos and ones will win this game. For you. Kent State has made just one three-pointer. Incredible. The defense on the wing by Cutler. Knocked it out of bounds as Edwin comes back in. Edwin has been a little quiet offensively, averaging about 13 points a game, but in this one, just one of five from the field. Hairston out top. You would think that these teams have played each other before. They both seem to have done a great job in scouting and preparing for each other. Nice feed inside and an easy one underneath for Joshua Ward from Washington, Missouri. Far too easy. The ball should never, ever enter the low post from above the foul line. Oh, and Tatum with a pinch. Great steal. He got it off Crenshaw and made it count. Boy, Tatum doing it defensively as well. Made his own that time. He has 19, a game-high 19. Well, this is how this team can turn you and turn the game around just like that with their defense. And they turn their defensive steals into baskets. Tatum almost came up with another loose ball. Jumper no good from the corner. Loose ball, and Tatum comes up with it. It's a three-on-three. Three. And Tatum fouled. Jamal Tatum playing with religious zeal, with a near-religious fervor on the court tonight. 19 points. And pumping up the volume with his bench as well. Bracket Buster Saturday featuring teams trying to break their way to the March NCAA Tournament. UW-Milwaukee taking on Hawaii at 8 Eastern on ESPN2, then midnight on ESPN. It's UTEP taking on Pacific, ascending the top 25, now at 19. This is really one of the great weekends in college basketball, Mike. And the, I hate to use the term, but the mid-majors really get an up-close look nationally. And some of the teams you don't usually get a chance to see take the main stage. And they should be seen more. We really should probably show more of their games. But this is great for them because today the selection committee members who may not see enough games either will be watching for sure. Make no mistake about it. And there's always a TiVo and videotape. Well, there really is. Because these are great great games to watch, and these guys can play, and which is evidence every year in the NCAA tournament when you find these guys knocking off people. It's not by accident. I wouldn't want to play either one of these guys. Hairston on the baseline. Out to a wide open Brooks and Darren Brooks. You know, it was just a matter of time. His offense, invariable and inexorable, starting to bring it now as Southern Illinois retakes the lead now by four points with 8.08 to go in the ballgame. A nine to nothing run by the Salukis. And this place has fallen deafeningly silent. Ball knocked out of bounds by Hairston. Time out on the floor here at the Max Center on the campus of Kent State University. Jim Christian pondering his next move. ESPN 2's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Nissan, who remind you there's no better time to shift your ride. And Pizza Hut, home of the new Dip and Strips Pizza. Grab a strip and you're destined to dip. Welcome back, everyone. Bracket Buster Saturday here on ESPN2. Southern Illinois with a four-point lead. Here was the scene at halftime. Today has been officially declared David Holmes Day at Kent State University. He was our dream job winner of 2004. The spoken with three votes. Grant, been cut. What's up, colleague? And David Holmes... David Holmes joining us courtside from Uniontown, Ohio. Hey, congratulations. Thanks and, uh, a lot, man. Welcome to the family, man. I got to ask Thank you, first you. of all, who struck the most fear into you? Was it Stephen A., was it Kit, or was it Al Jaffe? I'll tell you what. Stephen A. is the most intimidating <laughs> looks-wise, but Jaffe, he, he goes over with a fine-tooth comb there. He's the most picky. He, he had me scared in 1990, and I'm still here, so it <laughs> That's works. That's right. Well, I'll tell you what. It's great to be with a future star, and you're going to be a star. Make no mistake about it. Thank you very much. What, I appreciate what's your favorite it. sport? You know, I love NFL. I, I love it, but my favorite sport to be here, you got to love this college okay. basketball. Kent State, are you kidding me? Okay. This is fun here. What part of this game uh, impresses you the most? Uh, what do your golden flashes have to do to get back into this? You've seen them more than us. You know, Kent State's a team that has always shot the ball, ball so well from the outside. And really, that's what shocked me, is that they're even within four against, you know, we're talking a top 50, 
team here in Southern Illinois. It's impressive they've hung around this long. Oh, David, thanks a lot for joining us. Uh, we saw in a, a poignant moment, uh, shed some tears when uh, they announced you were the winner. We thought it was because they told you how much you were going to have to work for it. <laughs> but congratulations once again. Thanks a lot, Welcome guys. to the family. We're going to be starting up in March up in Bristol. and. Uh, Look for him soon on our family of networks, ESPN, ESPN2, and ESPN News. And he starts Monday, actually, on ESPN News. And don't forget that uh, the brand-new Dream Job starts up next Sunday, our third season. J.R. Reed, Dana Barris, Gerald Wilkins, Matt Bullard, Daryl Dawkins, former NBA players, five for the next job. Oh, boy, we all we better watch out, huh? <laughs> Four-point ball game with seven minutes to go. Just what, just what you want. Oh, great game. Guys are playing their hearts out. Both teams doing a great job right now, really, really moving the ball, and bringing the big guys away, cutting to the basket, driving it. Harrison back out to Brooks with 10 on the shot clock. A little show and go. Baseline jumper no good, but Shaw with another good rebound and puts it home. You got to really, you got to box out. You got to move that guy out of the paint. Shaw leads the team in field goal percentage at 61%. Became a starter seven games ago, and right now, and it's 11 to nothing. SIU run. Actually, no, it's uh, 14 points for Shaw. Great penetration set up that that shot and that foul, and now you get a chance to go to the free throw line and make two. Youngblood uh, got a quick breather and then came right back into the game less than a minute later. What do you think was behind that uh, substitution? Well, I'll tell you what I, I noticed, and this great thing with both these teams, when these guys get tied, they put their hand up, and I think they've got a rule like I used to have once a long time ago that if you take yourself out of the game and you're playing well, then you'll be the first guy to go back in. I think that's what it was all about, because he's playing well. Youngblood at the free throw line, his team down by six. But you know, you got to trust your coach a little bit when you do that. You got to have faith in him that he's going to put you back in. That's why some guys, they never want to come out. <laughs> Missed both of them. And you can't miss your free throws at this stage of the game. And he's a 70% foul shooter. Young out top for Southern Illinois. And Southern Illinois comes in 21 and 6. Kent State 16 and 9. And for the psyche of Kent State, this is huge. Youngblood had it knocked away. Christian calling for the foul. And rightfully so. Just got to be careful not to go too far on the court. Under six minutes to go. Airston out top. Good ball movement, good cutting. 14 on the shot clock. Brooks nice missed the rebound. floater in the lane. It's really good after the basketball. Brooks knocked it out of bounds. It'll stay with Kent State. Down by six with 5.31 to go. Jim Christian is his third year as the head coach. In their conference, they still have a chance to win the East Division in the MAC with four games to go. A lot of work ahead and trying to snap out of a two-game losing streak right now. Jim Christian, I mean, I go, I, I remember watching him play when I was coaching high school when he was on one of those BU teams that my high school team used to watch practice. He was a skinny freshman back then, and then he transferred down to Rhode Island where he learned some more of his trade under Tom Penders. In fact, I believe they went to the grade eight one year. Inside, Haynes missed the shot, a wild, out of control type of shot. And right about now, Mark, what I think is happening here is the officials are involved in the game in the sense that these are Missouri Valley Conference officials. They're used to, used to seeing Southern Illinois play with a lot of, uh, I guess, a lot of contact. And they're letting a lot of things go right now. Saluki's very deliberate. Mike offensively going deep into the shot clock once again on this possession, much like the previous two. Brooks traveled with it that time with seven on the shot clock. Never like to down gear too early because then you risk not being able to turn it on again, right? By all means, and with the three-point shot and the shot clock, most teams now will not really go into any kind of delay or stall game un unless it's under maybe two minutes and they're up by a ten or more points. Because you got to keep, keep playing, otherwise the guys stop also playing at the defensive end. Mac, the Mac Conference has had a good day on the scoreboard so far, and right now Penn State trying to represent the conference well, but turning it over that time, Huntley couldn't find the handle. That's their eighth turnover of the ball game. Kent State on the season, averaging 14 turnovers a game. 
From outside, Brooks calmly, coolly knocks down the jumper, and it's a nine-point ball game. Brooks with 14, well, right seems, at his season average. Well, he seems to get better as the game goes on, and you think he's tired, he's not. To think that Kent State rallied and actually took the lead in this half at one point. Blocking foul going to be called against Lamar Owen. Well, just goes, it just goes to show you how good this Southern Illinois team is. There's, there's a reason why their RPI ranking, I believe, right now is 13, I believe. And that's 13 in the country. That's out of 320-something schools. Right now, first place in the Missouri Valley Conference. A uh, 6-1 and one since Matt Shaw moved back into the starting lineup. They're a team this year, Mark, that I think no matter what happens in their conference, they're in at large. They're a team that's going to be in the tournament. Have to be. Jason Edwin knocks down the free throw. Edwin shooting 67% from the foul line with just five points in the ball game so far. Young man from the British Virgin Islands uh, took a very circuitous route to Kent State University here. Left the island 16 years as a 16-year-old. Played high school ball in Warsaw. Class B player of the year. Played at St. Louis for a couple of seasons before finally landing here at Kent State after transfer. It's a 16 to 3 Southern Illinois run. What you find a lot of times when you get these guys playing at the quote unquote mid major schools, it, it it's, it's actually ends up being most of the time a great move. And uh, speaking of moves, I think we're gonna we're gonna go right into a little break. Back after this. Good ball game over on ESPN between Syracuse and Boston College. Jarek Dudley, strong move to the rack. The floater is good. He's got 17 to lead the Eagles. Right now, BC up four with six and change to go. And we are just about, oh, 25 minutes away from Julian Sensley, who leads the Rainbow Warriors in points, rebounds, and assists, leading Hawaii against Wisconsin-Milwaukee. That game coming up right after our game in Ohio. Gentlemen. All right, thanks a lot, Scott. Back here at Kent State University, the Mac Center, a bracket buster Saturday. A little bit of a recap for you. Uh, Mac Conference uh, winning out with Miami of Ohio. Bowman Green, a couple of winners today. And that uh, helps out the collective RPI of the conference. And right, don't forget that uh, UW-Milwaukee taking on Hawaii next on ESPN2 at 8 o'clock Eastern time. Now, uh, the Saluki's at the free throw line. It's Jamal Tatum. Tatum, Shaw, and Brooks have accounted for 48 of the team's 57 points so far. Good teams go to the hot men, and that's what uh, Southern Illinois is doing. Very, very critical stage right now. 10 point differential. You got to get it under 10 first, psychologically. Tatum with. 21 points in the game. Rosinski. Cutley out top. You don't like it so hard when you trail big and then come back and take the lead and then lose it again. Very it's tough very to get your juice back. But Rosinski gets the layup inside, cutting the lead to eight. Very he has difficult. Four. Very difficult to do that. Uh, no doubt about it. Usually teams make one real good run. It's very difficult to make more than that. Guards uh, doing a little run and jump defensively. Yes, something they worked on earlier today in case they needed it. Right now they need to do something a little different. Tatum outside with 15 on the shot clock. And they designate which guys they're going to leave and run at the ball with. Little one four set, they flatten it out for him. Brooks. Harrison inside the three point line, and that's what seniors do for you, Mike. They knock down big shots. He has five. And the lead is up to 10. What's so impressive about this group is they just didn't, they never got rattled today. And I'm not saying they're going to win this game, but they certainly didn't rattle, didn't rattle when most teams would have early on. Youngblood trying to make a play. Mm -hmm. And they play solid defense, and uh, all their guys can close out on you, take away the dribble. That's why they, this team is as good as they are and as ranked as highly as they are. Approaching two minutes to go here on Bracket Buster Saturday, Southern Illinois led for most of the game lost the lead here briefly in the second half before regaining it with a 14 to nothing run and the Saluki's Joshua Warren calls a timeout with 157 to go in the ball game and some of the luminaries and stars on hand here today Antonio Gates of the San Diego Chargers a former 
basketball player. That's right, basketball player, not football player, basketball player. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, he's a little worn out from that trip to Hawaii in the Pro Bowl, but this is what he looked like a few years ago. He scored 1,216 career points, uh, had a school record 640 points in 2002-2003, and caught a touchdown pass from Peyton Manning in the Pro Bowl last week. I always say, Mike Jarvis, yes. you show me a good foreman, a good power forward, mm -hmm. I'll put him at tight end, and he beat anybody. Anybody. You're probably right. I mean, <laughs> I'll tell you what, Carl Malone, would would he scare you or not if he was in a football uniform? I think you're absolutely right, Antonio. whether they're undersized or not. Antonio Gates and uh, David Holmes honored at halftime. David Holmes, the winner of the Dream Job Contest with ESPN. Also a former Kent State student. Here's Hairston. Missed everything. Yeah, right now the guard should be basically the one channeling and shooting the basketball for uh, Southern Illinois. And the flash is still with a chance. They haven't made many threes and they turn it over. They're not going to come back making plays like that. And who just made that steal? I'll tell you, this guy, he's incredible. Darren Brooks can make it hurt you in so many different ways. Rosinski comes up with a steal. Southern Illinois giving this one away. Crenshaw fouled. Wanted the free throw line for a pair. Well, once he heard that whistle, he threw it up because he knew he'd get two, and it was a very, very headsy play. Crenshaw has only gone to the free throw line four times this year. That's what happens when you stay away from the basket. <laughs> oh, he's 5'9. I forgot to mention that. That's right, right he's smart. And his first trip to the strike today knocks down the first of two. Gates comes back into the ball game along with Youngblood. During that last time out, I just happened to peek down at the Southern Illinois bench, and the coach was telling the guys to go back door against those Janelles. Back cut, back cut, back cut. Let's see if they do it. Rosinski just got away with a little push that time. Crenshaw got a nice look from three. Got it. And it's a six-point game with plenty of time to go. Sure is. Two-possession game. You can't sleep on the little freshman from Detroit, Michigan. Something about lefties. <laughs> Lukies have played in some competitive bracket buster games the last two years. This one against Hawaii. Three pointer. And then two years ago, it was Darren Brooks missing this time, but Hairston was there to tip it in right there for the final margin of victory at the buzzer. So their record is spotless 2 0 so far in bracket buster Saturdays. There's a look at a pretty impressive tournament resume. 21 and 6 overall, first place in the Missouri Valley. RPI is uh, sparkling, stellar at 13. And he wins over Mandy, St. Louis, and Creighton. I'll tell you what, and look at the bottom, the, the bottom graphic. It's the only losses this year are on the road. And that trend might break if they should hang on and win here today at Kent State. It's a 32nd timeout as Chris Lowry draws one up so his team can get the ball inbound. And don't forget that Bracket Buster Saturday featuring teams trying to get into the big dance continues on ESPN2. UW-Milwaukee takes on Hawaii and UTEP takes on Pacific on ESPN at midnight. 9 o'clock Pacific time. Pacific leading the Big West Conference. And in the midst of a 17-game win streak. A great menu of games coming up on ESPN and ESPN2. Let's look at the mid majors poll. And uh, uh, fair to say that Southern Illinois, this side of Gonzaga, might be you know, one of the top two, top two uh, mid majors in the country. Yes, and if you're going to put Gonzaga in that uh, mix, then you've got to put the team you saw last week in there as well, George Washington. But maybe they don't consider them a mid-major anymore. Probably not. Not playing at all. Maybe. Six-point ball game. Harrison goes to the free throw line. Rosinski and Haynes get set to come back into the ball game. A couple of situational substitutions. As Tony Young comes out. At this stage of the game, you want your best 
Camden is in the game, if you're Southern Illinois, you want your best defenders in the game, obviously, uh, if you're Kent State, because you got to get the, you got to make stops. Harrison, meanwhile, the lefty from Fairview Heights, Illinois, knocks down another free throw. Young man that has uh, overcome a little bit of adversity, got in a fight during the preseason. And was forced to sit out three games by head coach Chris Lowry, and Lowry uh, dealt with the adversity early uh, soon after taking over, and has done a marvelous job of pressing the right buttons and pulling the right strings for his team in the big picture. From the corner for three, no good. Youngblood with the miss. And a foul committed by Wierzynski with 45 seconds to go. The lead at eight points. Well, you speak of uh, Chris Lowry. Um, he's a he's young in age, but he's very mature. Watching him today in practice, he's the kind of guy that when he speaks, everybody listens. He's also a guy that lets his assistants involves his assistants, and uh, you know they they're involved and they they work at their trade as well as him. Been a great succession of coaches at Southern Illinois. Uh, started with Bruce Weber and and Matt Painter for a year, and then. Painter left to take over another program, and uh, Lowry at 32 years old, uh, the head coach at Southern Illinois. They kept it all in house, He's and the thus kept the continuity going. Mm -hmm. Fourth youngest, and I think right now the third winningest. <laughs> Haynes a little bit strong, got his rebound back out of bounds. Kent State ball. And if you're talking about Chris Lowry, I guess the guy you got to give some credit to is the assistant coach Rodney Watson, who recruited him. <laughs> And they're on the same staff now working together. That says a lot about both men. Rosinski from the corner. And this one is just about cooked, glazed, and ready to be sliced. As Jamal Tatum, really responsible for that spurt at the end of the first half that gave them a little bit of leeway in play room. As Southern Illinois now with a 10 point lead, Tatum the sophomore with a sparkling. Stat line 21 points a team high game high 21 that handsome gentleman behind Chris uh, Lowry was uh, Mr. Watson, Coach right. Watson. <laughs> I know his wife would love to see, you know hear his <laughs> name and see his picture Tatum last year as we mentioned shot 46 percent from downtown now has 23 well Kent State will see their misery continue now on a three game losing streak while Southern Illinois will improve to 22 and 6 overall and a win on the road. And this is not an easy place to win a basketball game. There are some six and a half thousand people here today. Very difficult place to win a basketball game, but when you're good, you can win on the road like Southern Illinois. So Chris Lowry's crew improves to 22 and 6 overall by virtue of a 65 to 54 win. Jim Christian's team falls to 16 and 10, but still a big part of their schedule will be played with four conference games remaining in the MAC. Still entertaining hopes of winning the MAC East Division. Southern Illinois still sitting atop the Missouri Valley Conference. The final score is 65 54. We've been a presentation of ESPN, the Worldwide Leader in Sports. Right now, we're going to take you back to our studio host, Scott Reese, on Bracket Buster Saturday. Scott? All right, Mark, thanks so much.